Hey everyone, let's take a look at number 15. It is a big one. So all bags entering a research facility are screened. One out of every 10,000 bags entering the building contains forbidden material. 97% of the bags that contain forbidden material trigger an alarm. 15% of the bags that do not contain the forbidden material also trigger the alarm. Given that a bag triggers the alarm, what is the probability that the bag contained the foreign material? All right, so for any bag coming through this this research facility, one of, there's two categorical variables. The bag can either contain the foreign material or not. So let me go ahead and write one of our variables is contain forbidden material. And that's either, you know, yes or no, right? And then based on that, it's either gonna, the other variable is whether or not it triggers the alarm. And this is again, just a little yes or no situation. So these are two categorical variables and you have two options for each of them. So let me write two categorical variables. All right, and if we look at the numbers, let's start to look at, there were three numbers given to us. There's this one out of a thousand, right? There's 97% and there's 15%. So we need to start setting up a tree diagram and we have these three numbers to play around with. So I'm gonna put one out of a thousand I'm gonna have 0.97 somewhere and I'm gonna have 0.15 somewhere. Actually, let me be consistent, put the zero in front of that. Okay, there we go. Okay, so let's start to set this up. Now, when you when it comes to these tree diagrams, you have to figure out, well, where, where do you start? Do I put in, when I mean, where do you start? I mean, do you have forbidden material here? Well, that's not how you write forbidden material. Do you put the forbidden material and then maybe not forbidden material here? Or instead, should you be starting with the triggering the alarm, right? So it's, it, let me put trigger alarm, does not trigger alarm. So I think that's one of the, the trickier parts of a tree diagram is which categorical variable do you start with? Well, let's look at how the numbers were given to us. So if we look at the phrasing, especially on the 97% and the, and the 15%, I do wanna, let me switch colors on this highlighter. I want you to see that it says of the bags that contain the for forbidden material and of the bags that do not contain the forbidden material. Those are conditional probabilities. So they're gonna have to go on the second branches because the second branches are the conditions. And so what I mean by that is when we start this, my first set of branches will be contains forbidden material. And this is gonna be does not contain forbidden material. All right, so again, I'm gonna say if you if you can spot the condition, then those are gonna go on the second set of branches. And if, if you can't, let's say you couldn't, I would start to classify these numbers. This one here is about just forbidden material. This one here is about forbidden material and alarm, right? It's got some info on the alarm, right? And this second one here, the 15% is also, it's also dealing with forbidden material and alarm. Right, there's information on both of those things. So since you have two numbers on the alarm set, put the alarm on the second set of branches. So as we start to move through this, all right, let, let me go ahead and put my one out of a thousand here. I was told that one out of a thousand bags contain the forbidden material. So by the complement rule, 999 out of the thousand do not. All right, and then from each of those conditions, each of those branches, we can trigger the alarm. So I'll put alarm, no alarm. Alarm, no alarm. All right, so let's start to piece this together. So again, I'm gonna switch colors just so we can see it again. So 97% of the bags that contain the forbidden material. So that means I'm already along that branch. That was the condition. And after we're through that branch, then 97% contain, excuse me, trigger the alarm. So I'm gonna put the 0.97 here. And by the complement rule, it has to be 0.03 on this side. All right. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the 15%. So if I look at 15% of the bags that do not contain the forbidden material, so I have to be along this branch, all right? 15% of those also trigger the alarm. So I'm gonna put my 0.15 here, and then by complement, that's gotta be 85%. And that's me setting up my tree diagram. All right, once you're there, then we gotta, <clears throat> excuse me, we actually have to figure out what the, the rest of the problem is. So it says given that a bag triggers the alarm, what's the probability that it contained the foreign material, right? So there's my, my 
buzzword of P. So let's take a look at this. So I have a conditional probability. Something has triggered an alarm. And what's the probability that it contains the material? Actually, I'm just going to write the word material for a little bit ease, uh, easier time material. All right, and at this point, I, I'm going to use the conditional probability formula, which is the probability of A given B is going to be equal to the probability of A and B over the probability of B. Now, A in this case is going to be material. B is going to be alarm. So let me go write this out. This is the probability of material and alarm over the probability that I'm triggering this alarm. All right, so let's break this down. I'm gonna use, I think, every color I can. All right, so if I've got the and on a tree diagram, find the appropriate branches, so material and alarm, and I'm gonna multiply these two numbers together. So my numerator is gonna be one out of 1,000 times 0.97. All right, now for my denominator for the alarms, let's go with this one. If I want an alarm, there's two ways to trigger an alarm. I contain the material and I trigger the alarm, or I do not contain the material and I trigger the alarm. And these are two disjoint options, right? And so what I mean by disjoint is there's no one bag that can both contain the material and not contain the material. That just doesn't happen. So any bag is either on this top branch or this second branch here. So what I need to do is find the probability of each of those branches individually by multiplying these two numbers together and then these two numbers together and I will add their disjoint probabilities using formula one. And I think a simpler way of doing that is just multiply the two um, numbers that you need in each branch and add their, their probabilities together. So I'm just gonna do one out of 1,000 times 97%, right? Because I could contain the forbidden material and trigger the alarm, or you see me adding, right? Formula one, I'm adding, or I could not contain the forbidden material and trigger the alarm. And then it's a matter of putting all of this into your calculator and getting the numbers correct. So typically what I do is I'll, I'll look at the numerator first. So let me head over to my calculator. Let's clear this out. And I'm going to do 1 out of 1,000. And I'm going to multiply it by 0.97 and get 9.7 e to the negative 4. That's scientific notation, which is fine. So let's take a look at that. That would be 0 0.12397. That would give me 0 .00, or sorry, 9.7 times 10 to the negative 4. And then I'm going to get the denominator, all right? And the denominator is this number plus 999 divided by 1,000, and I need to multiply that by 0.15. So it looks like my denominator is 0 0.15082, so let me go put that in. And then I go ahead and I divide them. I like to break it up, otherwise it's just too many parentheses that are in my calculator, and I get things mixed up. So 0097, and I will divide that by my answer, and that would give me 0 0.0064. So let me go back, and let's put 0 0.0064, and see where that gets us. That is A. All right, so let me scroll that back down so we can see everything, and there is number 15. All right, thanks so much. Bye.